Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel, guys, where I'm going to be sharing with you what happens to your sperm while you are on finasteride or any 5-alpha reductase inhibitor based on several studies done so far. Because if you go to your doctor and he gives you a prescription for either 1 mg finasteride, aka Propecia, for male pattern hair loss or the 5 mg version Proscar, he will probably tell you that your sperm can get temporarily affected and once you discontinue the drug, your sperm parameters like sperm motility, sperm morphology, sperm count, and so on will get back to normal. No doctor honestly is able to pretty much quantify to you like what are the percentages, how much the sperm count will decrease or how much the sperm motility can be affected. So in this video I would like to shed some light on that. And before we start as always this video has been brought to you by Go Fiber, hair building fibers which you can use to mask any thinning, any patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice from them and try them out, see if you like them. Guys, welcome back once again, good to see you everybody. This is my hair loss and hair transplant related channel where I talk about these topics all year round. So if you are new, make sure you subscribe, like this video, get into my free Facebook group, Hair Transplant Experiences with over 2,700 members in the group and also check out my website, maddominance.com where you can uh, pretty much inform yourself on how to get your hair transplant done the proper way, hair transplant in Turkey, best clinics in Turkey, best clinics worldwide and stuff like that. Really good place to start your hair transplant research. Now, uh, we are talking about parameters of your sperm and how these parameters get affected while you are on finasteride, proscar or dutasteride. So if you are a finasteride user, proscar user or dutasteride user and you want to conceive a child, you want to probably do it the most natural way possible without using additional artificial ways of conceiving a child, you want to do it the most natural and pleasure, pleasurable way possible, then you want to make sure that things like your sperm volume, sperm count per one milliliter of your ejaculate, sperm motility and sperm morphology are all maxed out, right? So we can conceive your child very effectively, efficiently, you know, and you don't need to try or keep trying for many years. Anyways, now as far as your sperm specifications, uh, here are the normal values which are defined by World Health Organization. And you can see that the sperm volume should be at least 1.5 milliliter. Uh, sperm concentration should be 15 millions of sperms per one milliliter of ejaculate. Total sperm count should be uh, 39 million and more. Uh, then we have sperm progressive motility should be more than 32% sperm morphology should be more than 4% and this is usually the most important stuff. Uh, these values have been defined as of 2010 and right now we want to know how much these values are going to be affected. If you are a user of a drug finasteride which has one milligram of finasteride active ingredient in it or uh, maybe five milligram active ingredient if you are using proscar how is this going to affect all these uh, variables uh, because it is going to affect them and there is some research on it already i would like to start with the first study which has been done on finasteride one milligram the ejaculate volume in subjects on finasteride decreased in 11 percent compared to a decrease of 8% for placebo, okay? So this is not very significant and the conclusion pretty much is that the one milligram finasteride administration daily for 48 weeks, almost a year, did not affect spermatogenesis or semen production in young men. As far as sperm count, however, sperm concentration or sperm motility, there is no data, guys. There is no data as far as finasteride one milligram even if we take a look at the approval letter for Propecia, unfortunately in this paper there is no study which would be referring to finasteride affecting uh, the parameters which I mentioned like sperm count, sperm concentration or sperm motility. Unfortunately not. The producer of Propecia submitted some studies on the concentration of finasteride in the sperm itself because they wanted to make sure that the finasteride concentration in the sperm is not too high. So it could potentially affect the male fetus if a female is pregnant and the male 
using finasteride will impregnate such female, the concentration of uh, finasteride in that sperm shouldn't be so high because then it could negatively affect the development of the male fetus. And they expose like pregnant uh, female monkeys, female rabbits to like a several hundred times the dose of finasteride, which a man would take per day per kilogram of body weight. And they didn't find out any abnormalities in the development of the male fetus of that animal, be the monkey or rabbit in this case. But again, back to the topic, there is no direct study which would be a kind of observing, observing finasteride one milligram and how it affects the sperm count, sperm concentration and sperm motility. There is only this one study on semen volume, which in fact uh, doesn't seem to be affected that much based on this one study, which was again placebo controlled study. Interestingly, there is more data on a five milligram version of finasteride, PROSCAR, which has been developed uh, for treating patients with benign prostatic hyperplasia. And this drug has been around for longer than the anti hair loss drug, finasteride. And that's why there's also more research on this um, as far as affecting the sperm count, uh, sperm concentration and sperm motility even. And in this study, they were comparing finasteride 5 milligram and dutasteride 0 0.5 milligram and how it affected several parameters of the semen. This has been done over 52 week period plus 24 weeks uh, follow up. That means that after 52 weeks, patients discontinued either dutasteride or finasteride 5 milligram treatment and they have been followed up uh, over the period of 24 weeks um, for the testosterone levels, DHT levels, and also semen parameters. Now, if we take a look at the 24 week mark, which is about six months, we see that in both groups, the total sperm count compared with baseline was significantly decreased in dutasteride group it was 28.6 percent decrease and finasteride group surprisingly 34.3 percent decrease at the 52 week uh, mark it was almost 25% in dutasteride group and 16% only in finasteride group. And at the 24 week follow up after discontinuation of dutasteride 0.5 milligram and finasteride 5 milligram, it was 23% decrease still in total sperm count in the dutasteride group and six percent decrease only in the finasteride group. After a year of either dutasteride 0.5 milligram or finasteride 5 milligram, the semen volume was also decreased in the dutasteride group by almost 30 percent, finasteride 14.5 percent, uh, so more significantly with dutasteride, and the sperm concentration, it means the number of sperms in one milliliter of ejaculate, it was also reduced in the dutasteride group in only three percent and finasteride 7.4%. Now, there was also a significant reduction uh, of 6 to 12% in sperm motility during treatment with both dutasteride and finasteride, even at the follow-up uh, six months after discontinuation of both of these drugs. Okay, so this is already more substantial than the last 11% se uh, semen volume decrease uh, with finasteride 1 milligram. Here we have some clearly significant values, like pretty high values as far as, you know, sperm count decrease, uh, decrease in semen volume and decrease in semen concent uh, sperm concentration and also decrease in sperm motility. Well, that means that if you are somebody who is taking five milligram uh, finasteride regularly every single day, it's very likely that your um, parameters, uh, which I have just mentioned, will decrease in similar percentages like in this study. And even uh, at the six month mark after discontinuation of either uh, 0.5 milligram of dutasteride or five milligram finasteride, you can still see that your sperm parameters are not going to be like fully recovered, okay? Now, I don't know how much will it take for them to be fully recovered, maybe 12 months, maybe 18 months. I have no idea because we don't know based on this study. In this study, they also evaluated finasteride use in the male infertility population and how finasteride affects uh, the semen of 
patients who are already oligospermic. That means that their sperm counts per one milliliter of ejaculate are severely low, even lower than five millions of sperms per one milliliter. The summary of this study was that men who on average do not produce enough sperm in one milliliter of their ejaculate, they should not take finasteride because finasteride may really decrease uh, their sperm parameters even more, like substantially more compared to men who are non-oligospermic. Non but one thing this study didn't really elaborate on as much as I would wish was that the rebound effect was amazing. Once these men who were oligospermic to begin with stopped taking finasteride one milligram, their sperm counts not only did go back to normal, but they got like 10 times Times better. I don't know how it's possible but we can clearly see it from this chart. So men with a sperm concentration less than 5 million per milliliter had an average increase in their in their sperm concentration of 22 million per milliliter and those with sperm concentration initially from 5 to 15 million per milliliter had an average increase in their sperm concentration of 138 million per milliliter and men with a sperm concentration initially of more than 15 million per milliliter had an average increase in their sperm concentration of 95 million per milliliter after discontinuation of finasteride. So this is something that they did not elaborate on. It seems like the starting of finasteride and discontinuing of finasteride actually helped these men who were to begin with like oligospermic to become like the opposite pretty much like super fertile men. Uh, so that's pretty pretty interesting and I wanted to to see some elaboration on that because it's like pretty pretty great finding actually I have no idea why on how is this possible uh, but uh, it's pretty interesting finding nonetheless. The biggest drawback of this study is that only 27 men out of all of these 4400 men who were taking one milligram finasteride for hair loss only 27 of the guys were closely examined as far as their sperm analysis and and the rest of the guys, 4,373, were not examined at all. Obviously, we can assume that after discontinuing uh, the finasteride one milligram, their sperm motility, their sperm count would have probably, would have very likely gotten back to normal. But we don't know how these levels, as far as sperm count and sperm motility, were changing uh, for all of the other guys throughout the regular finasteride asteroid intake, how were the values before and how were they after discontinuing the treatment. So that would be very interesting to me. I would love to see that in this study, but unfortunately this study wasn't able to provide these results for us. Just because there is no data on finasteride one milligram affecting the sperm count, sperm concentration and sperm motility, it doesn't mean that uh, it's not going to be affected at all. In fact, there are many anecdotal reports on the internet where you can see see guys uh, taking a, a test uh, on sperm mor motility, morphology, semen volume before and after finasteride or while on finasteride and then after discontinuing finasteride and uh, this is actually something that one guy on reddit did as well and he posted his semen analysis results obviously no study uh, this is uh, no scientific paper it's just anecdotal report uh, some of you guys may not believe it some of you guys may think it's not serious i understand it but i have, see also no reason why this guy would lie about it uh, he says that he's been taking finasteride for eight years in February 2021 he stopped taking finasteride and he waited like uh, March, April, May like three months uh, for uh, doing uh, another test in beginning of June when he checked uh, his semen again because again uh, he wanted to wait 90 days uh, for the sperm uh, to completely renew and for all that a finasteride affected sperm to get flushed uh, out of his body and he got the same parameters tested semen volume pH level of semen sperm concentration uh, motile versus immotile moving or not moving sperm also uh, sperm morphology and total sperm count and uh, there were some interesting findings which came from this test uh, I'm not gonna be talking so much about the pH level of semen but for example the semen 
semen volume, his semen volume was same was the same uh, uh, while he was on finasteride and uh, uh, after he discontinued. So it was one milliliter of semen. Then the sperm concentration, the number of sperms in each milliliter of semen, which again should be at least 15 million in order for you to not be oli considered oligospermic. For him, it was 43 million on finasteride. And uh, after he stopped taking it, it was 54 million. So again, you can calculate it. I think it's like 20 uh, plus percent increase from 43 to 54. So that's, uh, I consider that to be pretty significant. And in terms of um, sperm motility, we see that he had 68% immotile uh, sperm, like dead sperm in February when he was on finasteride. And in June, it was 52%. So it decreased, which is good. That means that the number of motile sperm increased uh, from 32% onto 40 48%, which is great. And I think it should be at least 50% in order for you to be considered like uh, healthy. No, it shouldn't be. It should be more than 30, 32% uh, in order for you to be considered uh, like uh, super fertile, maybe not super fertile by uh, World Health Organization guidelines, but you know, fertile, considerably fertile. As far as sperm morphology, it seems like his morphology didn't uh, change. It remained unaltered, no matter whether he was taking finasteride or not, it was 4%. And uh, by WHO, Again, World Health Organization, it should be at least 4% motility on, in order for you to be considered um, fertile and uh, ready to rock. He says that it takes approximately 90 days for new sperm to be made, which is why I waited three months to test in between uh, stopping finasteride. I don't know if his doctor told him to do it like that or the guys who were testing his sperm. Uh, I don't know, uh, but I also read online from different sources that it takes about 65, maybe 70 something dates, uh, days for the sperm to uh, renew for the new sperm to be made. So yeah, 90 days uh, is, should be okay, actually, that he waited, uh, so that's good. But what I wanted to share with you is that we actually see some significant changes here. Obviously, it is just an anecdotal report. Take it with a grain of salt, please. Uh, I'm uh, actually curious about my values. Uh, I'm gonna do a similar test uh, very soon as well uh, while I'm on finasteride, and then I'm gonna stop it for a while and I'm uh, gonna uh, get this test as well just to make sure if uh, these changes will be also pretty obvious uh, as far as the semen parameters okay so uh, yeah guys that was pretty much it for this video that's everything I wanted to share with you as far as you know finasteride long-term use of finasteride how and how it can affect different parameters of your sperm so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you found it uh, some somewhat uh, valuable and insightful and as always give this video a like if you did check out my free Facebook group hair transplant experiences with over 2700 members if uh, in the group if you are somebody who's interested in a hair transplant somebody who has been taking finasteride for many years and now you see that the hair transplant is the next step because finasteride we're not able to you know regrow your hair the way uh, you want it it was just able to maintain your hair loss which is also a win usually and that's why uh, you need to you know uh, look for some surgical options so make sure you check it out check out mattdominance.com as well if you need my personal guidance I'm gonna be happy to help you out and assist you one-on-one -on -one throughout your hair transplant research so make sure you check out my website where you can apply for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me uh, www.mattdominance.com slash mentoring and I'm gonna get in touch with you after that okay so that was it for this video thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna be seeing you soon in another video do you want to have less stress and more success with your hair transplant like many of my clients before you already then make sure you apply for this one single call one single call very important call which can help you minimize all the possible mistakes you could do throughout your hair transplant research a call with an expert in this field which can help you maximize the chance of you ending up with a successful hair transplant if you like that make sure you swipe up right now and get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me